In this video, I want to look at reasoning through percent increase or percent decrease problems. And I'm going to start by defining each of these. If we have a value of a quantity go up, then the increase as a percent of the original is the percent increase. As an example, let's suppose we have a school that had 400 students and then they increased to 500 students. The value of the change is then 100 students. Since we went from 400 to 500, that's a difference of 100. And so what I now need to know is 100 is what percent of 400? And in this case, it's 25%. 100 is 25% of 400, so my percent increase is 25%. If the value of our quantity is going down, the decrease as a percent of the original is the percent decrease. This time, let's suppose we had 500 students and we dropped down to 400 students. Well, then we've changed by 100 students. So this time what we're asking, 100 is what percent of 500, our original amount? And well, 100 is 20% of 500, so here our percent decrease is 20%. So I now want to look at how I can calculate percent increase or decrease. And there's two different ways. The first is to actually use their definitions. For this, we'll let A be the reference amount, the original amount, and B be the changed amount. The first step is to actually find the change, which we'll call C. This is going to be either A minus B or B minus A, whichever one is positive. And then we calculate the percent that the change C is of the reference amount A. And this will result in either the percent increase or decrease of the quantity from A to B. And we saw this in my last two examples when I defined percent increase and percent decrease. This is how I worked through those problems. Next, I want to look at how I can reason through these problems using the distributive property. This is often more efficient than using just the definitions. Let's suppose we have our reference amount A and our changed amount B. And we are going to assume that A is smaller than B, so I'm specifically looking at percent increase here. If we calculate B as a percent of A, we will find that it's going to be more than 100%. And this should make sense since B is bigger than A. So B has to be more than 100% of A. In this case, the amount by which B, calculated as a percent of A, exceeds 100% is the percent increase from A to B. As an example, let's look at this strip diagram. Down here, this is 0%. A is going to be 100% of A, and let's say B is 130% of A. In this case, our percent increase would be 30%, since 130% is 30 more than 100. So let's look at why this is true using our distributive property. Well, if B is 130% of A, then B minus A, well, B is 130% times A minus A. I can use my distributive property to write this as 130% minus 100%. A, so I factored out an A and wrote 1 is 100%. And so I have that B is 30% of A. So if I want to use this method, I have two steps. The first step is to calculate B as a percent of A. And then subtract 100%. And this will result in the percent increase from A to B. So let's look at an example of this. Let's suppose the population of a city increases from 35,000 to 45,000. So what is the percent increase of the population? To start with, let's calculate what percent 44,000 is of 35,000. So in this case, we would have 44,000 out of our whole unit, which is 35,000. 
is equal to P over 100. I'm not going to go through the steps, but if we work this out, we get that P is approximately 126%. So my percent increase will be approximately 26%. We can do something very similar with percent decrease. So this time, if we have a percent decrease from A to B, then B is going to be smaller. So if we calculate B as a percent of A, it should be less than 100% since B is smaller than A. In this case, the amount that B calculated as a percent of A is under 100% is the percent decrease of A. Let's suppose we have this strip diagram. On one end I have 0% of A, on the other I have 100% of A, and B is 70% of A. In this case my percent decrease would be 30% since 30% is what I'm missing to get back to A. Let's look at why this works. If B is 70% of A, then I want to do A minus B since A will be the larger piece. Well. A is 100% of A, and B is 70% of A. I can use my distributive property to rewrite this as 100% minus 70% times A, and 100 minus 70 is 30% of A. So this is equivalent to my definition of percent decrease. In order to use this method, the first step is to calculate B as a percent of A. And then we subtract this amount from 100%. So let's look at an example. Let's suppose the price of a computer dropped from $899 to $825. What's the percent decrease of the computer? Well, first I need to know what percent 825 is of 899. So we set that up as equal to P over 100. And if you work this out, you get that P is approximately 92%. So my percent decrease would be 100% minus 92%, or 